We're already hearing um, stories about uh, towns that are canceling their uh, Hanukkah public celebration. Uh, we know about many, many Jews that are trying to hide any Jewish identity uh, symbols. And Hanukkah is all about uh, going out and, and, and lighting menorahs for everyone to see. They came back to us and said, hey, we would be ready with the proposal if we would have a ceasefire banner under the menorah. Right. Clearly taking a political side. Deep divides over the war in Israel, pushing some cities across the country to cancel or change their holiday events. That includes an arts festival in Williamsburg, Virginia, that said a menorah lighting would be inappropriate, claiming that it did not want it to look like it was taking a side, despite sending a private message to the rabbi we just heard from, urging they include a ceasefire banner. Joining me right now is Simon Wiesenthal, Center Director of Global Social Action, Rabbi Abraham Cooper. Rabbi Abraham, thanks very much for joining us this weekend. Assess what we're seeing here this thanks, weekend man. as Jews across the country celebrate Hanukkah uh, beginning Thursday night for eight days. Uh, we are talking about a very different moment in time today than we've seen in a long time. Well, actually, for American Jews, I hope, uh, we won't listen to the advice about uh, pulling uh, back from the public. Everything about Hanukkah is publicizing our values, our faith, our continuity, our history, our destiny. And what we've learned the hard way over the centuries is that every time we step back from the public square and we try to hide who we are, we just further embolden the anti-Semites to come after us. So my message, first and foremost, to our own community here in L.A. and, and beyond is um, we need to do things with um, dignity. We need to involve our neighbors and bring them on board. And we need to send a message clearly is that the, the Jewish uh, people are here to stay and that America is based on freedom of religion. That happens to also include American Jews. Well, it's incredibly disturbing to see what's going on on college campuses. And of course, you will be testifying this upcoming week in Washington in front of the House Foreign Affairs Committee uh, to talk about what's taking place in Europe as well. Can you assess the situation for Jewish people across the world? What's going on right now? Well, in Europe, we really have a situation where, for example, in uh, Germany, where the Holocaust was planned and executed. You have a quarter of a million Jews today. Uh, I was in Berlin last week. I'm going back right after the hearings again to Berlin. And you have a community that everywhere it turns. You have the neo-Nazis, you have the academics, and now you have a million uh, migrants from uh, the Maghreb and from Africa who bring with them, unfortunately, anti-Semitism. Everywhere they turn, they feel that they're under assault and siege. And whether it's uh, Germany, France, UK, uh, leaders are asking whether or not there's a future for them and their kids and their institutions. The numbers are skyrocketing. Uh, here in the States, uh, it's not exactly uh, where we're at, because I think most Jews, uh, including kids on campus, still will go around with that beautiful Star of David around their necklace. But the pressures, the intimidation, yeah. the bullying that goes on, right up to the top, as we saw, you know, the presidents of uh, the, the top elite schools basically yeah. either punting on anti-Semitism or leaving the door wide open for more calls for genocide against Jews. Yeah, we were all shocked at that hearing this uh, past week. Elise Stefanik, uh, the, uh, the uh, representative from New York, made the right point to asking them to really um, attack these incredible, disturbing notions uh, that we're hearing on college campuses, and they were unable to do it. Jewish students at Harvard even hired a plane to fly over campus with the Palestinian flag and banner reading, Harvard hates Jews. What do you want to say about these uh, college presidents and what needs to be done at this point today in America on college campuses? There needs to be accountability, which means they have to look for a new job. They can no longer lead when you create a situation on campus where every minority, including ones most of us have never heard of, have protected spaces. Uh, the universities want to make sure they feel safe. And Jewish kids have to hide in their dorm rooms. 
Uh, no way. And I applaud all of the people who've pulled out their contributions to these elite schools. And I hope yeah. it'll spread beyond just uh, Jews to some of the leading corporations in America, who, by the way, have been largely silent uh, since the horrors of October 7th. Well, thank God for the donors who are actually saying, this is unacceptable. I'm not giving you a dime more uh, in donations uh, until this changes. But, Rabbi, how did we get here? I mean, we all watched what took place in the Holocaust with horror. How is it possible that we're talking about this today in 2023? Well, I think one of the key points going forward, which I think Congress has to look at very carefully, is uh, we take a look at um, Qatar. Qatar has invested billions, that's with a B, over the years uh, in order to insinuate its, um, I would say, anti-Semitic and anti-Israel views uh, into the elite uh, campuses. They do so in a clever way, but those money trails exist. They have to be exposed. One last point. I would yeah. have to give high grades to the anti-Semites uh, because they've also co-opted the language. They've taken the language of the Holocaust. They've taken language of human rights and flipped it. So those who are perpetrating it are presented as victims, and those who are fighting it are projected as the 21st century Nazis. We've got a yeah. lot of work to do in the future, but remember the light of Hanukkah it pierces the darkness. All right. God bless you. Rabbi, thanks very much. Uh, this could not be uh, more disturbing, and we're watching your leadership. We appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah to all. And to you, Rabbi Abraham Cooper.